This is a few light bulbs. And to be more specific, this is my gas discharge collection. I've just added to it today with a couple of um, other of, uh, lamps here that are kind of odd and I kind of like them as well. Um, so we're going to take a look at those in a moment, but for now, we have some fairly interesting ones on here. And uh, we're going to spark a few of these up and see what they look like. So to start us off, we're going to have a look at the uh, halide um, lamps that I have. So we have a Philips Mastercolor Ceramic Metal Halide. We have a 35 watt Osram Parball Metal Halide, which I've already mentioned is in a fixture up above us to light this place. Then we have a 70 watt Osram Power Star and a 35 watt GE Constant Color uh, Ceramic Metal Halide, and one of them's just fallen over. But we're going to take a look at the uh, Power Star and the Philips CDMTD here because these are two that we are going to be striking up on this channel. Not only that, but we're going to be looking at the uh, sodium family that I have here. So we have two high-pressure sodium lamps here. These are Osram Violox, now TS, 70 watt. These will go f straight in the fixture up there. It's ballasted for a metal halide, but because these lamps are actually quite similar in operating behaviours, I can use them in this fixture, so that's good news. And then we also have this 35 watt low-pressure sodium here. Of course, I can't not start this up on this channel because uh, this is one of the most awesome lamp types you can get and um, it was a pain in the ass finding these lamps somewhat cheaply, even used lamps, but luckily I managed to find a seller on eBay selling this one off for uh, 11 quid. So I bought this and I got the appropriate ballast. So to start off with, I have two of these lamps. I've already got one of them up in the fixture because I was just testing it out earlier. And then I have the other one inside its box here, so we're going to have a look and see how these are packaged. Um, I don't think these actually come with pamphlets, these lamps, but they do have a box inside of a box, which is quite interesting. So we're just going to get that box out of this box, and then we're going to have a look at this box, and then we are going to... Yeah, it's just information on inserting the lamp, making sure you're safe. As these lamps operate at low pressures, they're not really dangerous to run in open enclosures, so they generally don't really have the same protections as, say, a ceramic metal halide or any other form of high pressure lamp. So there it is, that's the etch. Let me just show you that. Also from Firelux, 70 watt, now TS Super, Son TS Plus, Great Britain. And then that's the uh, discharge tube inside. So let's take a look and see this one firing up. So here is the nav tier. So we're just going to flick this one on. Like so. Immediately ignites. Now as you can see it starts immediately uh, launching the sodium into the arc stream pretty much. And then you get this really nice strong orange colour out of it. And then as the lamp warms up the uh, colour temperature shifts and it also begins to get a bit better uh, colour rendition. So uh, we'll take a look at that once the light's finished warming up. I'd call that about warm, so I'm just going to switch the camera over. Here's the desk, I've just got a few tools out just to see what the colour's like, and if I put my hand underneath it, strong yellow. It doesn't actually look as yellow as it does on camera in real life, but it's around about what a sodium yellow looks like, or at least on camera anyway. So let's switch over to one of the other lamps then. So, now that I've finished with this lamp, we're going to bring in its second cousin, twice removed. The ceramic metal halide. This one is a Philips Master Color CDMTD, 70 watts, and it's got a color rendering of over 
and it's 4200 Kelvin. That's what the 942 stands for on this lamp. So I'm not going to muck about, I'm just going to get straight into the box and show you the lamp itself, since the box art doesn't really show you much detail, because low res box art is a good thing to some people, I guess. But anyway, here it is, this is the lamp. Standard RX7 base, it's the same as what your 500 watt um, halogen lamps would come in. Apart from it's a fair bit wider and the uh, base is a little bit chunkier as you can see. So, inside here is a ceramic arc tube. It's made out of the same alumina ceramic that the high pressure sodium lamp is made with. So, that's pretty neat to know. And then you can get other colours like magenta or cyan, so metal halide truly is a very interesting chemistry. Okay, so for this one we're just going to strike it straight up and uh, light it. Luckily I decided to focus a lot easier this time, so uh, that's cool. Alright, let's go flip the switch. Tink. And I'm just going to make sure that camera stayed in focus, which, oh, surprise, surprise, it has done. And we're just going to watch this lamp warm up. Luckily, this shouldn't take just uh, shouldn't take as long as the high pressure sodium because uh, these lamps work at much higher temperatures and pressures and uh, get hotter faster. Interesting little side note: that blue color that you can see on camera, the um, of the outer glass is actually the UV block. It fluoresces ultraviolet light, which is quite an interesting little effect, especially when you've got a black light, which I just so happen to have. I might show that one at the end of this video. Anyway, let's watch it warm up, and then we'll be back with a colour rendering test. Okay, so here we are back at the desk with another colour rendering check. As you can see, the reds are a little bit more defined, but you can see a lot more of the blues here as well. That's quite nice to see. And if I put my hand underneath here, it's actually quite close to natural skin tone. So, all in all, I'm quite impressed with the colour rendering of this light. Alright then, on to the next one. Now, simply due to the fact that this lamp is so good for colour rendering, I've decided I would do this next one under the light of it, because it's actually really good for video work. So... Here is the Osram Power Star. This one I'm going to have to get a cloth for because it's not, it doesn't have any ceramic ends on it. And you'll see in a second why that is. So I'm just going to get it out of the box. Of course, being careful not to touch it because uh, these lamps are made out of quartz glass and quartz tends to shatter under high temperatures when it's got oils on it. So here's the lamp. Here's my cloth. And we're just going to get a closer look at that arc tube as well. As you can see, there is a wire wrapped around it. Uh, funnily enough, that's not for protection. That is to assist the lamp in striking, which this thing certainly needs, because sometimes it can be a little bit painful to strike. Could be because the wire leading from my ballast to the fixture is over a metre long, though, so... Because that can actually play quite a role in the um, ignition behaviour of these lamps. So there's that. And that's this lamp. We're going to strike it up once I've cooled off the other lamp. Um, but for the time being, let's just do a little bit of an experiment. So it just so happens that I do have a fluorescent black light, which means that we can do this test, this little trick. It's quite cool. I'm just going to hook this up to this fixture, switch it on. You can see it sort of glowing. As you can see, there's quite a nice strong blue glow. We get the lamp out. And put it right in front of it. And that there is the UV coating fluorescing. Let's put my hand over, you can see it even better. It's quite a strong blue glow to it, too. If I switch that off, look. Switch back on. And off. And on. And off. And on. There you go. 
then just and then just as an added experiment, I've got the uh, Violox lamp here, and as you can see, it doesn't really fluoresce under the black light, which is to be expected because um, sodium lamps don't actually put out that much UV, if any. This ceramic metal halide, on the other hand, most certainly does. As you can see, it's glowing quite strongly there. And then the one that's and the two that are up in the fixtures also do. So now that we've just done that little experiment and satisfied our little uh, interest there by shining a UV light onto these things, let's stick this up in the fixture up there and see how it does. Of course, as I've said before, these ceramic metal halides actually glow quite a bit when you uh, switch them off. Also, just to prove a point, here's my black light again. That also fluoresces under black light. Cool, huh? Okay. So here is the Osram lamp in the holder. We're going to fire this thing straight up, no mucking about. In three, two, one. Ooh, nearly falling out off my chair here. Three, two, one. This thing does like to flicker a little bit during startup, but you can, now that we've got it started, you can see that blue colour a lot more on this lamp. Uh, like I say, it's actually quite a sensitive UV coating that's on this lamp, so that's quite cool. So we'll just let this warm up, and then we will take a look at how it renders colour. Okay, so here's the colour rendition test. As you can see, the reds are a little bit more pronounced in this one, and we've got a bit more of that yellow that we saw from the high-pressure sodium kind of colour. Um, it's not as bad as this in real life. It's not quite 100%, but you can still see we've got quite a lot of blues in the light, as well as reds and some yellows, of course, because uh, this is a halide lamp. They are known for yellows. So, that's this lamp. Okay, and now for the big guns. And here it is, the big guns. My 35 watt low pressure sodium lamp that's been in the background of this video for a little while now. We're going to strike this up because I do have an appropriate ballast for this. I even built an igniter so that I could start it up without having to spend a load of money on getting an SX72. So, hey, it'd be rude not to. Plus I've been teasing you with it all this video, so I can't not. Sadly, I'm not going to put the full warm-up in this video. I'm probably going to make a separate clip of this thing warming up at some point. Not quite sure when, because uh, I'm not sure when I'll have the time to be able to do that, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to hit the igniter switch here, and we'll see whether it wants to strike first time, which it does not, because I haven't even got it switched on. Doi! Let's try again, then. Straight away. Come on. You can do it. It's not quite lit yet. Oh. It nearly had it. Wants to. There we go. That's lit. So as we can see, nice red glow. And it will progressively become more orange as it warms up, and then we can do a full colour rendering test. So uh, let's wait for it to warm up a little bit, and we'll be right back. We're getting close. And here we go, about 10 or so minutes later, the lamp has fully warmed up, and we are looking at how it renders colours. Also known as not very well. Um, the yellows are coming out okay on the camera. My hand is bright yellow. Can't see any of the blues. You can probably just about make out that that's red, but... Yeah. Just like I say, you won't be able to tell too much about what colour whatever... Um, what colour everything is. Of course, this will reflect light, so... No real biggie. If I get something that's red, like this box, it actually looks less red on camera. So, there's that. Anything that's orange, you can't even see the orange. And that's about it. 
So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment, and I will see you all in the next video.